lesson two for day two is synthetic division. And really, we're going to do one example of synthetic division, and then we're going to talk about the rational roots theorem. But rational roots theorem involves synthetic division. So we'll practice synthetic division every um, problem we do today. So first example, use synthetic division to divide f of x, given there, by x minus 3. Write a summary statement in fraction form, which... From my understanding, what I always just basically we're going to write the answer the same way we've been writing our other answers. Okay? So, when we set up synthetic, we're going to set up a little box here. The box has what we're dividing by. But when we do synthetic division, we drop out all of the variables. Okay? Now, what goes in the box that represents what we're dividing by? Negative You got 50-50 shot here, right? Negative three positive. or positive three? I think positive. positive. Okay, so when you are given it in the form of x plus or minus a number, you do use the opposite sign. My suggestion, I usually think of it as, okay, if it's x minus three equals zero, then I'm going to use three, right? That's kind of how I think about it. Remember it. If they just, for whatever reason, and we won't really see it today, if they just give you a value and say, okay, this is your C value or your A value or whatever, you don't change the sign. It's when they give it to you as a linear factor that you change the sign. Okay? Now, on the top row next to this box, we're going to write our coefficients. Starting with the 2 in front of x cubed, you continue with your coefficients, making sure that all place values are represented. So after an x cubed term would come in x squared term, then an x term, and then a constant term. If any of those are missing, you have to put in a placeholder zero, just like in long division, right? So 2, negative 3, negative 5, negative 12. Okay? I'm leaving row for a leaving room for a row of numbers and then drawing a line. The first number, we just drop down. So the first number I'm dropping down is two. Two, two is going to represent the first part of my answer. Okay. Then it's a multiply step. So we're going to take our divisor of 3, multiply it by this 2 down below the line, and then that answer is going to bounce up here and go above the line, if that makes sense. So 3 times 2 is 6, and that's going to go in the next empty spot there, underneath the negative 3. Then we add. So this is a spot where it is opposite of long division. Long division we subtract, right? We add here. What is negative 3 plus 6? 3. Repeat the process. Multiply again. The divisor of 3 times the value we just got of 3, which is 9. And that 9 goes up under the negative 5. Then we add. Negative 5 plus 9 is 4. Then we multiply. 3 times 4 is 12. And then we add. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. zero. What does that 0 represent? The remainder. Uh -huh. In this case, I got a remainder of 0. You won't always get a remainder of 0. If we got a remainder of something other than zero, we can still write our answer just the same. Now, so my answer is represented by 2, 3, 4. But we give your answer, you don't get to leave it as 2, 3, 4. We have to put it back in terms of this problem, right? So this is going to be 2 what? X squared. Yx squared. Okay, so one way to look at it, and that's the shortcut I like to use, they start us with 2x cubed, yes? Mm -hmm. 
So one less, we always start one less than that. One less than 2x cubed is 2x squared. The other way, the mathematical reasoning behind it is, it started with an x cubed. We divided by a x. And your synthetic division only works when you're dividing by a linear factor. So you're always dividing by x to the first. So x cubed divided by x to the first is x squared. So if that's 2x squared, what's 3? Plus 3x plus 4. Just count down from there. Okay? Coincidence. Don't expect it to always count down, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess what I have in fraction, I can never remember that. I mean, here's my deal, guys. Can you write this answer? That's what I'm concerned about. Um, I have that... Their fraction form, what you may see in the answer key is them writing the problem as 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 12 over x minus 3. It's like saying that that fraction is equal to our 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. You might see them do something like that. Okay. Yes. Okay, so the remainder, you read my mind here. So if this remainder was anything other than zero, so say my remainder, let's continue the pattern, was five. Then, just like long division, we'd say plus, and it would be five divided by your divisor of x minus three. So remainders get written just like long division, and that it's the five divided by x minus three. Okay? I would ask, did that come back to you? But I don't yeah. can't guarantee everyone's have seen it before, so that's why I was guessing. But it's pretty easy. We did like so much long division, like there was no chance I could do that. But we oh. didn't do that much synthetic division. See, and I don't do a whole lot of either in algebra two. They're learning that. They learned that just this past week as well. But I don't do a whole lot. We did it for like six weeks. We did more. We do more synthetic division. Use that. I kind of like in this class, I kind of introduce long division and review it, but don't do a whole lot she with did, it. She did that. Exactly. She did that for Paris. But for you understand why I do two different days. Yeah. Because now that you've seen this, you would never, you would say, eh, forget yeah, long division. Long but now here's the deal. If it's x squared or x cubed you're dividing by or something like that, you have to use long division. This only works when you're dividing by a linear factor. Okay. So. A big place we use synthetic divisions is with factoring, and specifically we're going to look here at the rational roots theorem. Okay, something we saw a little bit of in algebra two as well. Suppose f is a polynomial degree function of degree one or larger, then x equals p over q. Okay, where p is an integer factor of the constant coefficient. Okay, so P is an integer factor of the constant, right there, constant is the big deal. And Q is an integer factor of the leading coefficient. So what that's saying is when we set this up and we're trying to find our possible rational roots, PRRs is what I call them, okay, we're trying to find our possible rational roots, we're going to do factors of the constant divided by factors of the lead coefficient. And this will help us find potential rational zeros or possible rational zeros. Okay? So, example two. Ask us to find the rational zeros. Okay? Rational zeros, if you remember rational, anything that can be expressed as a fraction. Okay, so anything can be expressed as a fraction. We're not talking irrational, so I'm not wanting to know the square roots we can't do. And we're not talking complex, so we're not wanting to know about the imaginaries. I think that pops up in next lesson, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, we get to the imaginaries in the next lesson. Okay, so to find the rational zeros, we're first going to start by finding our PRRs. PRRs being potential rational roots.
potential, rational roots. You might hear me say potential rational zeros, but PRZ is this. Okay. Potential rational roots is what the PRR stands for there. Okay. In order to do this, we're going to use that theorem we just talked about, where X is P over Q. And I'm keeping this at the top because I do have more stuff to do. Where P is factors of the constant coefficient. And Q are the factors of the leading coefficient. So what is my constant in this problem? In x cubed minus 8x squared plus 10x plus 4. What is my constant? 4. Okay. When it says constant coefficient, they're talking about your constant. So on top here, we're going to do factors of 4. We'll talk about what those are in a moment. Divided by Q, which are factors of the lead coefficient. What's my leading coefficient? Because my leading coefficient is whatever is in front of my highest power term, right? What's in front of x cubed? The invisible one. So factors of one. Now, do notice it did say integer coefficients. And where integer coefficients come into play is integers can be positive or negative whole numbers, right? So it's going to be our regular factors, but positive or negative. So what are factors of four? Two. Okay. In other words, what numbers multiply to be four? Two times two and one times four, right? So I'm going to list for my factors of four, plus or minus one, plus or minus two, plus or minus four. Okay, I was just getting ready to ask. Do we need to add like negative two in there? I'm just going to write as plus or minus. Just easier, rather you're doubling the length of your list if we do positive two, negative two, eh, no. Easier to do plus or minus. Okay, factors of one. One. one times one is one. We got nothing else, so plus or minus one. I know that was a tough one, wasn't it? Okay. Now, with this, I personally never leave my answer like this, my PRRs like this, because I want to see a list of PRRs. So in this one, we only have one denominator choice. So there's not a whole lot of mixing and matching to do. But options are going to include what's 1 over 1? One. 1. What's 2 over 1? 2. What's 4 over 1? 4. So my PRRs are going to include plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. The list gets longer when you have multiple denominators to choose from as well as multiple numerators. I'll demonstrate that on the next example, okay? But those right there. are my P R R's, my potential rational roots. If you have a homework question that just says find all potential rational roots, which I believe you do, maybe, maybe not, it looks like there's something else with it, you stop right here. If you're ever asked what are the potential rational roots, make a list, stop here. Now, is that what it asked me for? Oh, wait, it says rational zeros. It wants all of our rational zeros. Now, keep in mind, I just used the word zeros and roots. Those are the same idea, yes? Zeros, roots, same idea. So, we have to decide what works here. Does one work? Does negative one work? Does two work? Does negative two work? Does four work? Is negative forward. And this is kind of a short list, if, to be honest. Okay? 
Can you graph this to like chat before we start? Well, and that's what we're going to use as our starting point. Okay. In that, we are going to graph these to give us a start as to, okay, where should I start checking? Okay. I could teach that, okay, we're going to try one. We're going to test it. We're going to check and see if it is a factor, which how do we know if something's a factor? If it has a remainder of zero, right? So we could use that remainder theorem. We could do that, but we're checking six numbers at that point, aren't we? That's a lot. Okay, that is a lot. And if it works out to be one of the first couple, piece of cake. If it's the last one we check, not so much. So graph this equation. Okay. Does your graph look like my graph? Yes. Now, as you look at our graphs, and I'm going to sketch the graph here in a moment just so I have it in my work. Okay, it's not that you're required to sketch this graph. It's just when you go back and look at these notes later, it's going to make more sense if you can look at the graph beside it. Any thoughts? Do we see a rational root that we should use as our first guess to check? Me personally, I do. Maybe a two? Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like probably a two. Now, looks like there's something between zero and negative one, yes? Do we have any of those, any numbers between 0 and negative 1 in our list? No. And I think I count that one as between 6 and 7. Do we have anything between 6 and 7 in our list? Okay. So what we're probably looking at is the only rational root is 2, and the other two are either irrational roots or complex roots, a.k.a. imaginary roots. Well, no, never mind. That was a, wow. They're not imaginary because they're on the graph. They're on the graph. We can see them. So they're That's irrational. Wow, that was whew, that was bad, guys. Okay, so I'm just gonna sketch the graph here. Can you graph the square root of negative one? Does that work? No, not on a regular graph, at least. Okay. So what I'm gonna say is based on the graph. We're going to try x equals 2. And we're pretty sure it's going to work, aren't we? And as you're looking at this problem, you may be thinking, why didn't we just graph it and skip all this other stuff? This other stuff leads us to our irrational answers, which we don't need our irrational answers here, but we will on future problems. Okay, so there's a reason I'm teaching this process. Hang with me on it. Now. How can we check two? Plug it in. Okay, one option is to plug it in. And that's the option I taught on Friday because we had not talked about synthetic division. I personally would prefer, well, actually, it's more than the fact that I prefer synthetic division. If I just want to know the remainder, I'm, I prefer synthetic division. But here's the idea. If we have to factor this and look for more roots, we need to use synthetic division to help us factor it. Okay? So we're going to take 2 is our guess. That is just a number 2. So 2 just goes in the box. And we're going to synthetic divide. So 1, negative 8, 10, and 4, correct? 
the numbers from the original problem. Do you remember how synthetic divide? Drop the one. Multiply. Two times one is two. Then we add negative eight plus two is negative six. Then we multiply two times negative six, negative 12. Then we add 10 plus negative 12 is negative two. Then we multiply two times negative two is negative four. And then we add and we get zero. Okay, guys. Here's what we know right now. This is our remainder of zero, yes? Yes. Since we got a remainder of zero, what's that tell us about two? Two works. We have just verified. I know the graph pretty much already verified it. But we have verified officially that two is a factor. Okay, it represents a factor. Now, we need to check and see if there are any other rational zeros. Okay, officially or unofficially, my graph turned off up there. But we already talked about the other two don't match up with anything in our list, do they? So that probably means the other two aren't going to work. But here's how we check. Or here's how we would figure out. Okay. So we are at a point where this function, f of x, it factors. What is the factor I just divided by? We just divided by 2. What does that represent as a factor? Uh, x minus 2. So what, because we divided by 2, that represents the factor x minus 2. And this 1, negative 6, negative 2. What factor does 1, negative 6, negative 2 represent? That is 1x squared minus 6x minus 2. This is why we need synthetic division as opposed to just plugging that 2 in. Because I need to be able to see my other factor here. Now, we know x minus 2 gives us one answer of x equals 2. We already knew that, right? Other answers would come from factoring this. Does x squared minus 6x minus 2 factor? No. I can't multiply to get negative 2 and add to get negative 6. Not happening. So since this does not factor, there's not going to be any other rational roots. They're going to be irrational, irrational roots. What did this question ask me for? Rational, rational zeros. Yeah, rational. Now, bounce down to the bottom when it says find all real zeros. Guess what? You would keep going. But on this piece, I'm going to say does not factor. And since it does not factor, this is going to be irrational roots. And this particular problem did not ask me for irrational roots. Fast forward to another problem and it will. Now, if we needed to find our irrational roots on this one, how would we solve for x in x squared minus 6x minus 2? I should officially say equal to 0. How would we solve that since it doesn't factor? What's our backup plan when something can't factor? Quadratic formula? Okay. So this right here would be quadratic formula to find those irrational roots, which that makes sense because quadratic formula has a square root in it, right? So this would be quadratic formula if we needed our irrational roots here. 
you can just be thankful we don't on this one, right? I am. Okay. The quadratic formula is not that. It's just like it feels. So Everyone always groans at it for whatever there's reason. Still it's just, it, yeah. It's there's so much. <laughs> okay. Ready for next example? Okay. What's example five asked me to find? All. Oh, or no, rational zeros. Nope, we're still at rational zeros. You get, still get to enjoy it for a moment. So, the process I want you doing, I do not want you just hopping on the calculator and graphing. Okay? We need to learn this process. So, where do we start? Factors of negative and factors of negative. Okay. We need to find our PRR, PRRs, potential rational roots. So, in order to find our PRRs, if you will, okay? Officially, it's listed as X equals P over Q. P is factors of what? Negative two. So, factors of negative two because it's factors of the constant over fat over Q, which Q is factors of three, because it's the lead coefficient. So negative two over three. No, I don't want. What are factors of negative two? Okay. And since we're doing integer factors, basically what I need you guys to come up with is factors of 2 are 1 and 2, right? Yeah. We're going to write this as plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Okay? Because that gets your negatives in there. What are factors of 3? Plus or minus 1 and 3. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. Now, this does not qualify as a list of PRRs yet. Okay? I want to know what my individual possibilities are. So take turns pairing them up. So I always take turns. I'll take everything in the numerator, put over the first denominator. Then everything in the numerator, put over the next denominator. I just kind of work my way through until I've finished with all the denominators. So 1 over 1. Plus or minus 1. 2 over 1. Plus or minus 2. Okay, I've taken my turn putting everything over 1. Now I'm going to put everything over 3. three. three. So 1 over 3. Plus or minus 1 third. 2 over 3. Plus or minus 2 thirds. Okay, this is why it's important to have this list because... Notice we've got some non-whole numbers here, don't we? So these are my potential rational roots, PRRs. Now, you can start randomly trying some. Or you could check the graph out, couldn't you? I'm all for checking the graph out. So I was like, that's not right. I was gonna say, that looks um, that's the next problem. <laughs> I was like, why that? that? Crazy. In my brain, I knew what the graph should look like. I'm like, that is not the right shape. I was like, oh, that's a little bit It should be. Okay. Trust me. I was confused myself, so it's all good. There we go. Does your graph look more like that? Yes. I just gotta type the right one in. I was jumping the gun there. 
Always do a Zoom 6, right? That's, what I did. That's why I always preach, always start with standard Zoom, especially like today. You're starting fresh. Who knows what you last graphed, right? You didn't just graph something two seconds ago. Mine's so. wide. Unless you did your homework two seconds ago. Well, unless you're doing your sec homework two seconds ago, but yeah. Okay, guys. What are your thoughts? What are your guesses here? Uh, negative 2, negative 130. Does this look like a negative 2, possibly? I'd say so. Yeah? Looks like a negative 2. What's the other one that we're pretty sure of? Negative Well, 1. I would say 1. I'd say that's better. Okay. Because here's the deal. When we go through and test these here in a moment, I'm going to start with the ones I'm more sure of, as opposed to, you know, negative 2. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that goes through negative 2. 1? I'm pretty confident it goes through 1. And those are on my list of PRRs, right? Now, what about this guy between 0 and negative 1? Do we have some numbers between 0 and 1 that that could be? This one is 0. Yeah, that could be negative 1 third or negative 2 thirds. What would you guess it is based on looking at the graph? One third. Looks like a negative 1 third. Now, and here's what I will tell you. Something you'll learn. I can guarantee you it's going to be rational because... Irrationals occur in pairs. Is there anything else to pair that up with? No. My other two appear to be rational, so that one has to be rational because there's not a make for it left to pair up. Okay? Rest, or excuse me, irrational roots and complex roots always occur in pairs because of the plus or minus thing. So, okay. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to write it here so we have it in our notes. Based on the graph, we're going to try x equals negative 2, 1, and I'm going to say negative 1 third, but I'm going to put a question mark under it because, you know, I mean, okay, and here's the deal, you know, I still want to confirm algebraically. Okay, so the whole graph is just to get an idea, a quick view of the, the quick glimpse to see, okay, what are my options here? And as long as you know one of them, honestly, the other two we, we would be able to factor out. So, okay, I would pick one you're confident with. So I'm either negative two or one, and we're going to try it. So if I put negative two in the box... What well, goes beside it? Three, four, negative five, negative two. Bring down the three. Multiply. Negative two times three is negative six. Four plus negative six, negative two. Am I okay if I go a little faster with this this time? We've got synthetic division down. Well. Multiply. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. <coughs> Add. Negative 5 plus 4. One. Negative 1. Two. Multiply. Negative 2 times negative 1. Two. 2. Remainder of 0. That's good news, isn't it? Yeah. Now, do me a favor. If it doesn't work out to be 0 officially, don't force it. Because I need these other numbers to be correct. So go back and figure out where your mistake is. Don't just kind of think, eh, close enough to zero. You can't do that, okay? Because we need our other numbers to be correct. And if that zero isn't officially working out for you, you might have a problem. Now, so here's what we know at this point. Remainder of zero, which means negative two works, yes? Now we want to test one or another one. However, you could go back to the original problem but I don't recommend it because 
if we keep going and with a new set of numbers, we can factor it down. Meaning, we're going to use this new set of numbers here, and we're going to use that with synthetic division. So what are we synthetic dividing by this time? I would go with 1. Instead of using the 3, 4, negative 5, negative 2, I'm going to suggest we use... 3, negative 2, negative 1. Because that's what we get when we factored out that factor represented by negative 2. And again, the point of this, I'm doing my factoring. So I'm not going to have to do a product in sum or product of AC when I get to the end. I'm doing my factoring now. Okay. Drop the 3. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 2 plus 3? 1. 1 times 1? 1. Negative 1 plus 1, 0. So again, 0 worked, or 0 is a remainder, so now we know 1 works. Okay, guys, we don't even have to check Yeah, we don't even have to check the negative 1 third. We have proof. Okay, what does this 3 and 1 represent, if I put it into like an algebraic form. 3x plus 1. Right? So this 3 was originally 3x cubed, right? Mm -hmm. So that means this 3 would represent 3x squared. So if this 3 is 3x squared, that means this guy is 3x plus 1. What is that 0 when you set that factor equal to 0? X equals 3. 3x equals negative 1, negative 1, and x is negative 1 third. So our graph did it all for us, really, didn't it? Along with our list of PRRs. Okay, so this question said find the rational zeros. What are my rational zeros? Negative 2. 1 and negative 1 third. Could you write those as factors if you had to? Yeah, here was the 3x plus 1, yes? This negative 2 is x plus 2. This 1 is x minus 1. And then we'd have the 3x plus 1, right? So those would be my three factors if we were to write this out in factored form. We would have the x plus 2, x minus 1, and 3x plus 1. That's our factored form. So that's how we can use synthetic division to factor. Okay, what the heck? I want to get through this problem. How am I going to do that? Ooh. Okay. What's the difference on this last problem? You got to find all the difference. All real zeros. The only difference going to be at the end is we actually find any irrational zeros. Okay. Let's start. We'll see what we can do with it. My timing is not working the way I wanted it to today. I know. Okay. PRRs. x equals p over q. Factors of what on top? Eight. Over factors of what on bottom? Zero. Everyone's okay with factors of 8 over 2? Yes. Constant over lead. What are my factors of 8? Uh, 2. Four, four, two. One, eight. One. Okay? Multiply, my brain says multiply to be 8. 1 times 8 or 2 times 4? So plus or minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. What are factors of 2? Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. Okay. So I'm going to practice listing all my PRRs out. First of all, I'm going to put everything over 1. 1 over 1? 
2 over 1, 4 over 1, and 8 over 1. Is plus or minus 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now, we're going to take turn and put everything over 2. 1 over 2 is 1 half. Plus or minus 1 half. What's 2 over 2? 1. Oh, that's right there. And I've already got that. I'm on the other one. What's 4 over 2? 2. What's 8 over 2? 4. I've already got those numbers. So my PRRs are this list right here. If you, by chance, did them in a different order, you have all these pieces, right? If your brain works differently on how you pair them up, I'm not going to argue. You have all the pieces. Okay. Now, well, advantage, I accidentally did the graph earlier. That's good. I wasn't trying to. Serendipity. Mm -hmm. Serendipity. Oops. Accidentally did something good. No, it's just a, it's a word, okay? Sorry for knowing like words. Okay. <laughs> Any thoughts? It's a W, sorry, if I zoomed out, yeah. No! Okay. Here's what I'm going to say, because I don't, okay. Do the homework for tomorrow, okay? The part that I didn't get is at the end, I talked about, right? You might have to quadratic formula to find your irrationals. You, you know, something like that, okay? Um, or you might just have to solve something. But solve anything you get, find those irrationals, attempt the homework, we'll deal with everything tomorrow, okay? So, I have a quiz planned on Thursday, so I don't really want to add a day in here. I kind of want to keep it set where it is. Quiz is on Thursday. Okay.